Hey, what's going on there guys and girls? So today on the GoPro Hero 8, we got the Media Mod, which is a, I guess like a mini boom mic. So I don't know if my voice is gonna sound different. Um, and I'm holding this little uh, handheld as far away from me as I can. And then uh, we'll see what happens when I turn the camera around like that and show you some stuff. And if my voice is really, you know, affected by this boom because i imagine the voice booms looking that way and uh i don't know we'll see we'll give it a try but uh i bought new sd cards um some sand disc from costco because the uh the other samsung one that i bought i noticed on my hero 3 black plus whatever it was um that it was overheating you know and and then i bought this gopro hero 8 black and it, it was overheating too. Now it's warm in the garage. I mean, it's probably 100 outside right now. It's probably 90 in here. So I don't know if it was just overheating, but they weren't even in cases. Like the GoPro Hero 3 was in a skeleton case. And then this one's, you know, just got the medium mod now. And um, I feel it and it's barely warm, but we'll see if, it, if overheating is an issue. And I, don't, I didn't know if it was something to do with the speed of the car, you know, couldn't like resistance in a wire. Like it was not letting the, the media saving as quickly as it should or could with a different card so i got 128 gig the u3 the writing so small i couldn't see all the details on the card but uh anyway we'll see if that helps this thing uh from overheating and shutting down automatically because that's what was happening last time all right so anyway on to it basically what we got here is we got the uh the atlas bp8000 two posts and if you've seen the video where i picked it up um it wasn't too bad. Brought it over here and uh, used a cherry picker. This cherry picker over here. Let's see if we can check it out. Use this little uh, Pittsburgh Harbor Freight Special uh, bar from a buddy. Anyway, I use that to pick up the, uh, the columns and place them where they are. I'm actually moving all of my other garage as much as I can over here um, in the front of the Carmen Ghia. What I gotta do now is basically I'm going to go over here and put the column, I already kind of put this column where I think it's gonna be temporarily. Um, and then I'm gonna get this column, I'm gonna show you guys how easy, it's just awkward, it's all it is, um, how easy it is to move it over here. And uh, I already broke that light bulb once. Even though I said, told my wife to watch out for it or me, I forgot, but uh, broke that one once. So I know I gotta be careful with this thing as I move it over here and shimmy it. As long as I get it over here, shimmy it that way, it should be fine. I might have to take down uh, some of that stuff. I might just take it down anyway, just because. And then what I'm, my plan is that once I get this thing mocked up here, um, I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna bring in my Carmen Ghia and just temporarily put it here with the arms, the yellow arms to make sure that the, uh, the positioning of the columns is really where I want it. And then once I get the car in here, get the yellow arms kind of like pre-positioned to where I think it would be, I'll, I'll move these columns, you know, if I have to move them that way a little bit or that way, I really am limited on this side by that. Um, I don't think I'll ever have to worry about that portion when it comes up because really, I think that whole thing's only gonna come up to about here, given the height of my vehicles um, and the ceiling. So anyway, I'm not worried about this piece so much. I might cut that off anyway, just to get it a little bit cleaned up. Um, but yeah, I'm limited by that. And then I think that one is actually over just a little bit more for some reason, but um, we'll see. And then one thing I gotta worry about is my release handle for, for the lock the lift lock it's down there too um i think i might try to put that the problem is going to be is i think it's going to hit it would hit this and even if i took off the pegboard i think it'd be pretty close to the wall i might have to play with that and see but um i was thinking of just putting the handle like right here so all i have to do is just whoop, flip it which means that the lift will sit like right here and it might pinch me out just a little bit um it might you know, i might lose like eight or ten inches on my door but any sacrifices, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead and put this bad boy up on the tripod right here, and we will uh, show you guys just what it looks like trying to move the column by yourself if you wanted to. 
And um, oh, by the way, I haven't done my epoxy floor yet, but I'm going to. And uh, the whole garage, you know, will be done as far as like the floor is concerned with the epoxy. But then I'm gonna have to drag those columns probably from outside. Um, I'm probably gonna store them outside, I guess. I was walking to lay them down on a dolly and pull them out and stand them up in the courtyard. And then I'll let the floor dry for a week or so. And then I'm probably gonna put a moving blanket or a, a thick towel or something like that and have somebody pull pull the towel while I try to slide the um, slide the lift. Or actually, as I'm thinking about it, if I put the if I put the column bottom on the dolly, all I really gotta do is just have someone you know hold that bad boy, or I'll buy another dolly because I only have one. Um, but uh, I could just dolly it in here, and in theory get it like have two people pick it up move the cart out and probably just stand it up i think that might even be better because you don't want to scratch that epoxy floor so you guys will see that part when we get there as well um, but right now it's just a mock-up to make sure that when i go cut the concrete and do rebar that it's it's the right spot so um hopefully it's not too bright out there i don't know if you guys can see that well i'll probably put the camera maybe i'll put the camera over there so that way it'll kind of show you over here and then it's not so bright. All right, guys, hang tight. Looking forward to you watching me as I do this, and then hopefully you get uh, motivated and excited to try and do it yourself. All right, next clip coming up soon. is going to be, let's see here, finding the dimensions, ah, what do they got here, I right, do a conversion from 3,353 millimeters down to uh, inches, so let's see, it's like 32 and, 32 and quarter or something like that, I forgot, I already did it once, so. Never do math in public. Let's see what we got here. So, calculator. Uh, 3,053 divided by 25.4, I think that's what is in an inch. So, 132 inches let me see here google what's the word i guess i should fast forward to this part of the video because you're probably getting bored what is your age and gender what it's ridiculous don't worry about this people google.com okay um how many millimeters in an inch Yep, 25.4. So, in theory, we go here, 3053 divided by 25.4 equals 132 inches, which mm, let's see where I'm at, 132 inches, all right. Basically, 
Let me get this. Uh, get you guys seeing what I see here. So I knew this was gonna happen, and uh, it's kind of hard to see there. You got 131 inches. So what that means is I got that bad boy right here that I'm gonna probably have to take off. To be honest, I'm gonna try and take it right off at the other portion of the foundation here and I'm only gonna have to do that for or maybe if I it depends on how far over I put this thing because there's this handle right here which if I literally just go over about an inch that should clear the uh that should clear right here um because I'm gonna try and put this thing basically back an inch as well so that it would butt up against here and I could probably just go like this maybe. I'll have to see as long as this isn't uh you know really resting on it and and maybe by virtue you know this thing can't can't seat all the way because this is the safety mechanism so i don't want to screw that up at all and uh over here see i got a uh, same situation i got about what is this let's see an inch and three quarters of concrete right there so i think what i'm gonna have to do is I'll mock up where exactly I want the lift columns once I get the car in here and see. And then at that point, what I want to do is figure out, you know, hey, I'm gonna have to cut you know, right here on this side and maybe an inch on that side. And basically I'm gonna have to get a concrete saw and cut it at an angle and then uh, try and chip this away. I don't wanna affect this uh, you know, foundation too much. Um, this side's just a single story garage and so I'm not really worried about the weight. The main weight is on that wall over there because of the two story and that wall face is basically peeking out above. But it's also this wall here that runs around is, is mm, <laughs> probably not as weight bearing as you would think because it's just that right there. Um, again, the weight bearing is coming down pretty much in line with the door down here. So, you know, I'm not so concerned about doing the uh, doing the concrete as far as, you know, trimming a little bit off right here. Yeah, I got the expansion joint, so I think I'm gonna have to try and pull that out a little bit and then try and put in an expansion, expansion joint at the, uh, oh, at the new base, which, you know, it'll be along here. And the uh, only problem I can also see here is um, if the studs, Oh, hold on. All right, so here's the good stuff. This is the hydraulic unit. So I want to mount the hydraulic unit up too as well, just to see if it, for some reason, affects where I want to put it or just anything, you know? So we'll see what's in the box. Oh, and be careful whenever you're cutting open uh, any boxes you get because the hydraulic lines were in a little tiny cardboard box that pretty light and I didn't know what was in there and use the blade. I didn't hit him, but definitely be careful. I hate these little white fluffies. Ah, anyway, so I don't know how this thing mounts. It goes right here. Oh, let's see here. Oop. Right there. Put this camera right here. I think I had, there's probably some hardware in the box that, uh, that go onto the tower. Because there's no holes on this side. It looks like it probably goes right here. I'm guessing. This would be a good time to open up the box for the, uh, this thing. Oh, shoot. Sorry. So, let's see here. Oh yeah. Installation of the power unit. Attach the power unit onto the bracket on the power side column. It's the power side, looks like. Secure using the M10 by 20 and locking washers D10 
and washers D10. Awesome directions, people. Okay. So let me uh, let me find those bad boys and we'll hook it up. Look that still. Let's see right there. So just threading these in there. Gonna keep the uh, washer out because it's gonna connect on the back side or the inside of that bracket up there. So like this. Bring the washer back. And I guess hopefully you can hit it here. Away. Stop capture. All right, here's the arms. Get them cut open. Put these on. Basically, I'm just gonna mock it up with the car in here just to see. You know, it should be 100% perfect. Just gotta be 91% perfect. And I think I'm gonna just put this up here. Because uh, when the bottom comes down, it actually you'll you see in the frame here. Oh, shit. It's heavy, <laughs> but these things are spring loaded and they push up, so you can when the vehicle's down, you kick these out without these locking them in. So it's kind of cool. Uh. GoPro, stop capture. Basically, all I gotta do now is uh, move the car out and uh, I move it back actually. This might hit right there. I got about four inches. I got to go back here. Be like that. Here we go. The front windows are clear. I got enough back here still. This workbench won't be here. Once it's all done, I have a workbench back there. So I'll come right, walk around here. My Corrado will be up in the air. This thing can actually be forward more, um, a couple inches. Uh, maybe I'll leave it here so I can walk around the front. But, uh, but yeah, that should pretty much be it. So now all I gotta do is Move the car back out and uh, move the car back out. Then I will um, basically measure from the garage concrete, concrete, I'm sorry. I'll measure from the garage concrete front area kind of to the, the front of the leg 
in the foot, if you will. And then uh, make sure that the foot distance to the garage concrete is the same. And then um, I will uh, I'll basically make a template out of cardboard. So that's pretty much it. Uh, stop the video here. I'm gonna move the car out, and get the cardboard, make a template, and then that should be it for today, I think. Hot. All right, GoPro, stop capture.